Merkava 2D project is almost ready so today I will show you how I prepared an asymmetrical model base using resin elements from Mac 1 offer. Welcome back to the channel, before we get started make sure to like and subscribe. The basic elements are a large piece of street with a nice section of various asphalt textures, a pavement and a unique bus stop in the funny question mark shape. In addition a model lamp from HD models as a complement to the whole scene. I decided on a slightly different shape than usual. It won't be rectangular but quite asymmetrical. Well, more in the moment. First, four stripes of the sidewalk that need to be cut off from a larger piece. A cut along the line is enough to easily break off the piece you need. I have to use two and I wonder how to combine them to cover the joining line. The main part of the street will be reduced on both sides along the lines I have marked with a pencil. As in the case of the pavement I broke off the cut element with pliers. Of course I sanded the edges with sandpaper. Connecting the street to the sidewalk is best done by adding curbs. It turned out that I had to make them from a piece of balsa. It wasn't too complicated, it was enough to cut equal pieces and sand them. You can add a little more surfacer or other body to make them smooth. I glued them to the street with CA glue and it's done. Now the pavement installation. I made supports out of a piece of balsa plank and glued some resin pieces on top of them. I did all the work with CA glue because it significantly shortens the working time and sticks the resin and balsa well. The base for the stop was also installed in this way. As you can see I also added brackets to strengthen the whole structure. Now the main elements are in one piece so they can be covered with the sides of the stand. I used previously cut pieces and fit them to the edge of the street was easy, quick and fun. Just take a look that at this point the final shape of the base is done. It's asymmetrical as I said before. It was sized to the model and bus stop and all the unnecessary areas were cut off. I filled the inside with a light form and glued it to the resin with PVA glue. Without any more finesse it's just about filling the space. The second layer is already bigger pieces which I glued in the same way as the previous ones. The whole thing was closed with a piece of cardboard. Four screws helped to fix everything permanently. As you can see I covered the edges with masking tape and I masked the screws with soft pads. Generally the most important thing is that it doesn't scratch the table and moves easily. Ok, now a bus stop. On the bottom I drew it four holes for wooden pins made from toothpicks which will keep the whole thing in one place and won't give a chance to detach from the stand. I did the same on the bases. The most important thing is to measure where to drill the holes. With one of my favorite tools which is Tamiya drill I did the job. As you can see the bolts fit perfectly in their places. I will mask the connection between the pavement sections with pieces of metal plates. 
the largest has a perforated surface. This silver piece is from a beer can. Now it looks like masking some drainage devices or something like that. Before I started working with imitations of soil and pigments, I painted the walls of the base with a very dark grey paint mixed with pigment cement and water. You can ask why. The answer is very simple. Even the sanded surface of the balsa is susceptible to paint soaking. The glue reduces the amount of paint needed and clogs micro spaces. Nevertheless, to make it look good you need to cover the boards at least twice, if not more. I cleaned the top surfaces from dirt that accumulated during construction with model degreaser. The product evaporates very quickly so I could start painting after a while. This time I took the risk of not covering the whole thing with a primer. No risk, no fun. I covered individual parts of asphalt with various shades of grey. Thanks to this it looks very natural and isn't uniform. As you can see it isn't some kind of super precise painting. In a moment after weathering all imperfections will be completely invisible. The sidewalk metal plates and the base of the bus stop were also painted. I already painted the bus stop with an airbrush. I put a white stripe on the back more to make a color variation than for any particular reason. I wiped it off a little with Tamiya thinner. You have to be careful not to damage the previous layer. I did it. Yeah. So I painted a little more. Thanks to this failure I've got the idea that I will stick some interesting graffiti there. I remembered about a large set of stickers from AK that I have in my collection. They are very colorful and I was sure that they will be the eye catcher. The red stripe is quite characteristic and visible in the pictures of the original, so I painted the same on here as well. Additionally I also filled the inscription on the top with this color. I masked the place where a bit of dirt was supposed to be with tape and started applying a color neutral AK product. Such a small piece is a moment and I took off the tape so that it wouldn't stick to the edge of the base. I did the same on the other side of the bus stop. After removing the tape, the edges of the ground were smooth with a toothpick. While waiting for the ground to harden, I washed all the elements of the stand. I removed the excess with a thinner but also with a paper tissue. Even despite the lack of glossy varnish, wash was easy to control on all surfaces. 
Of course, an accelerator would be helpful here. Many thanks to my patrons for the support. If you want to join this exclusive group, just check my website. I think that you won't be disappointed with the content as there are full HD photos I don't publish anywhere else. In addition, you will be able to watch my movies much earlier and be informed about the projects I intend to implement. You can find the link in the description below and at the end of this video. I glued the prepared bus stop to the base with slow drying glue. Then I masked the edges of the soil again and began to apply the sand. I saturated the place with pigment cement and then poured sand with small stones. I also filled the free space between the bus stop, base and sidewalk, cleaned the excess and poured it with glue. After removing the masking, it looks perfect. The tall street lamp has a toothpick holder and is designed to be removed during transport. I drilled a suitable hole with a drill and fit a lamp in it. The sand has not stuck to the surface yet, so it's easy to remove. The entire lantern was painted light grey. I applied weathering paint as a basic sand color. It's still the same shade that I used earlier with the model. Looking at the pictures of real bus stops, I noticed that the curbs were painted yellow, red or white and red. I decided on the first option. Painting twice is enough and the colors add a little variety to the whole stand. White stripes on the street are easy to make, masking tape and paint are enough. 
To make them looking a bit worn I decided to use a cotton bud. All in all it wasn't such a bad solution but I will find out in a moment how much of additional work is waiting for me. What a piece of... Sh well, I need to make some corrections. Why did this happen? I glued the tape too weakly to the asphalt surface. In addition, its rough surface also favors the influx of paint under the tape. That's all. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, I decided to add graffiti to the bus stop. The stickers are very good, but I put a bit of micro scale set under them. After arranging I additionally apply sole so that they will fit perfectly into the surface. Ok, now it's time for some detailing. The bushes from beer scale modeling will be the first. I cut them a bit and glued them to the surface with super glue. They fit perfectly when it comes to colors and overall appearance. Then I decided to add metal bars on the sidewalk, white and red. A broken umbrella and a plastic chair will add more interest to the surface. Destroyed banana box, newspapers, chips, packets will all fit well with the scene. On the bars I added a bit of scratches with dark brown paint and a sponge. Two minutes of work. Stains at the bus stop have been painted with heavily diluted brown paint. The weathering paint is back in action and this time it will be under the pigmentation of the street. Already at this stage by painting with this paint I will mark where the places left by the cars will be. I applied the pigments with a white makeup brush that I have had for a long time but I haven't used it yet. It worked perfectly.
Of course, the pigment excess was removed with a portable vacuum cleaner and Sweety Fingers once again became a necessary tool in creating the right look on asphalt. In general, I have pigmented places where cars mainly don't ride. This created very visible lines and there is no doubt where the traffic takes place. The pigment also appeared on the pavement, filling the spaces between the individual tiles. I dumped the excess onto the soil. The same was done at the bus stop. To fix the figure and the suitcase that will appear in a moment, I drilled two holes in the base. Metal elements on the street have been polished with a silicon tip and graphite. One of the last elements on the stand were the track prints on the asphalt. Yes, I know that generally armored vehicles don't ride on streets because it's very easy to damage them, but for the purposes of the stand I decided to forget about this important detail. I covered the piece of track left from the model with masking tape and wrapped it with a pencil to mark the places where the edges are. I stuck the strip on the table and started cutting out the marked places with a sharp knife. This is how I prepared the template for painting the prints. A light grey paint was sponged over the entire piece of tape and then gently peeled off the street. This way I made traces for both tracks and additionally a piece for a vehicle presented on the base. In addition, a bit of operating fluids from the bus was painted along the entire length of the street, as if the car had a leak on the engine or other chassis element. Finally, I attach an inscription made on a self-adhesive foil.
The last job was screwing the model to the stand to avoid unnecessary problems. In this way everything is secured and you don't worry if the model will slide off at the least expected moment. And this is the final result after all episodes you have watched last weeks. Well, I hope you have watched them, but if not, just check my channel, subscribe it and turn on the notification bell. You can also click like and leave some comment which will be very helpful to develop Cold Demons PL. Well, I feel that this project is one of my favorite IDF models and for now I need to build on the Merkava 4 to have all her numbers in my collection. Maybe I will make some episode about my built IDF models? What do you think? Please let me know in the comments. For my next project I'm going to build something bigger which means there will be more models and more figures and some nice base for that. So stay tuned for more. That's all for today my friends. See you next Monday. Cheers!